One of the standard purification or separation techniques in any kind of synthetic chemistry is distillation. This is separating components of a mixture based on their boiling points. It's a very old technique. It has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It entails phase changes, taking a liquid, usually boiling it in the vapor phase, moving the vapor phase somewhere else, and condensing the vapor phase so that you have a purified liquid left behind and the other materials left behind in the still pot. Distillation is one of the oldest processes we know. It's used today everywhere from the petroleum industry to making gin and whiskey. Uh, it's a powerful process if the material you want to isolate is reasonably volatile, if the material is also one of the most volatile, that's the lowest boiling point in the mixture that you have, and that it is chemically stable at the temperatures you're going to be using. Obviously, it's no use if you heat it up and it decomposes itself. In any synthesis, you're going to end up with a mixture of product, side products, co-products, catalysts, unreacted starting materials, solvents at the end of the reaction. In the workup, one of the ways of purifying is to distill. And we'll talk on that now. In distillation, you heat all of the mixture to the boiling point of the lowest component, actually and it will form a vapor and move away from the rest of the material, be that other solvents or brown goo. Now, let's show what that looks like. Here is a generic still. We have the reaction mixture here, and it will be heated and move up, and at some point there will be a side arm there'll be a condenser here to cool, and your product comes out. So to show what's happening, there is heat going in at the bottom. The components of the mixture will boil. You will get vapor moving up the column, the distillation column, and some of them will move out into this side. This is cool, so heat is actually moving out here and this will now condense into droplets of liquid, which will drip off here into a container. At this point, you've now got a separation of the lowest boiling component or components through the vapor phase, back into the liquid phase, and into the collection vessel as distillate. You can't actually use this particular setup directly when you're working in the microscale. That's because there's an awful lot of volume associated with the vapor phase in this setup. And so the microscale apparatus will be um, on a vertical axis, and the vapor path is considerably smaller. For a microscale distillation, again, we'll be using a conical bottom vial with some kind of heating apparatus here and always a spin vane. Above, instead of a condenser, which you would expect for refluxing, you have what is called a Hickman head. This is the collection vessel. And above that, there is a condenser. At this point, we have heat going in from the bottom, from the hot plate. Vapor will form and travel up. It will condense as heat leaves through the water condenser, and droplets will trickle back down. However, because of the shape of the Hickman head, you end up with the liquid collecting in the circular well just above the boiling vessel. Here is a microscale distillation setup ready to go. We have here, obviously, the hot plate at the bottom and a heating block. This is a conical vial. There's a spin vane in there. Sometimes you may have a round bottom vessel here, depending on if, whether you've got more liquid or not. It's held in place with a threaded cap, 
And this piece of glassware you've not seen before is called a Hickman head, and this is where the distillate will collect. Notice that the Hickman head and the uh, vial are clamped to a stand. In the top of the Hickman head is a standard water condenser. You've seen one of these before. Back at the Hickman head, when vapor moves up, it will condense and trickle down, and it will collect in this circular well around the outside. Actually, collecting the liquid here is going to be a little tricky, so what you will have to do, actually, is remove the water condenser for a moment, lift that up. Obviously, this isn't hot or running, but you use a plastic dropper to remove the liquid here and then transfer the distillate to another vessel. As soon as you have done that, if the distillation is still happening, you lower the condenser and continue the distillation process. That's how it looks by itself. Let's actually put it together in a fume hood and do an actual distillation. So let's put these together actually in a fume hood. We'll start off with a hot plate, and don't forget the power cord goes down the side before you plug it in to minimize the spaghetti that is going to appear in this fume hood very shortly. Put your hot, uh, your heating block on top, and try and get the well as close to the center of the hot plate as you can. I've assembled the vial and the Hickman head here and that will stand right there. I'm going to need to move the scaffolding just a bit and take a three-finger clamp and affix this properly and clamp to support that properly. You'll notice I've got that spinning already. We now want to have the condenser moving in Now, as I make this connection, this joint here is very easily loose because you're supporting two things with two separate clamps, and it's very easy for them to just slightly not be in the right position, and you end up losing all your distillate out the gap here. So do make sure that this clamp is loosened initially so that that forms a tight seal, and then clamp properly so that we've now got a good seal here. This column is now ready to start distilling once we've got the condensers working properly. Attaching the cooling water, again we'll hear that clunk properly to make sure that it's in place. Attach one and then the second. And I can now see bubbles moving through this as you can there so we know we've got some circulation check to make sure that the water hoses are nowhere near the hot plate, otherwise that will start to melt through. We're now ready to start heating. I'm going to turn this on, and we'll start heating my mixture. Now, if you need to heat more strongly, remember we have the heating blocks that you can arrange around the outside and that will increase the heat transfer to the medium. I'm not sure if we're going to need these yet or not. And at this point, we heat until it starts boiling. We've left this for a while, and it's now actually distilling. You'll notice that the still pot is boiling down here, and the vapor comes up, it condenses. It's a rather damp day, actually, so you can see condensation on the outside of the condenser, but if you look in the Hickman head, you may be able to see fogginess. And this is the, sol the liquid that we're distilling here is condensing around the Hickman head and collecting around here in the wells. Okay. Is that that? The well is filling up, and so what I'm going to do now is take some of the distillate off. To do this, I need to raise the condenser a bit. Come on. Out of the way. Take my plastic tip. It, sometimes it helps you bend the tip a little bit. 
and remove my distillate, put it into a vial, got a nice yield there, and this has still got liquid in it so we can actually keep distilling. So there we are, and we can continue to get a second crop from that. You normally keep distilling until you've got all of the distillate out. Usually, you're left with not very much behind. Sometimes when you are distilling, you will get some co-distillation. If you've got two products that boil at a similar temperature, you'll get two things out. But this is considerably better than the mixture of goo, gum, and several things I've got in the still pot. And so, starting with your distillate, you may want to refine that. In conclusion, distillation is a purification step. It's a separation process where you remove the lowest boiling uh, component or maybe two components from a mixture. It will work if the component that you wish is volatile, it is stable in its vapor form, and it is one of the lower boiling components in the mixture. You should now know how to do distillation using microscale glassware.